Some of you are not hearing me, you're not understanding me. It is not the time to give up. Every if day. you work it, it works. Just work. And when you get to the top, you know what's hard? Stand there. You just have to work every day. Your name, your you money, work. your status don't get you to be a professional athlete. You understand me? Yes, sir. These four years right here, the choices that you make right now is going to determine the next 40 years. 1992, 2.27 a.m. in the morning, I got a phone call and my mother was crying and screaming on the other end of the phone. It changed my life for the better, man. But the very next day, my mother wanted to see her, her baby child. We went to the funeral home that had my brother's body. I saw my brother laying on a gurney, pulling his head. We had to clean him up and got all the blood. He ready to do the autopsy on his body. And when I looked at him, my mother was so broken down. I told him, I said, I'm gonna stay forward. I'm gonna commit myself to kids in my life. And when that happened, I changed my major to child development. And I told God, if you give me a platform, I will. Save your kids. My commitment, my calling, my passion because of what happened to my brother. But I wasn't chasing my dreams. I was chasing my dreams for my mother, my grandma. Once I realized that I had a real gift, I really tapped into it. And I asked God one night through a prayer and told him my dreams and my goals and what I'm going to do for us trying to manifest it. And if he did his part, I would do my part. No matter how strong someone looks, we all have our own personal battles of things we're going through in our life. Don't lose who you are. Don't lose your good doing. Don't lose your heart. We need to check on the ones that we love, the ones we care for. We cannot continue to let our problems manifest into our heart. Without football, what would have happened, do you think? Honestly, to be real with you, I'd probably be in the penitentiary or dead. On one side, you have a dream. On the other side, there's a real nightmare. If, if it don't happen, you're going to be another statistic from where I come from. So every quarry full of you see, there's 10,000 of us left behind. If the top wanted to fix the bottom, they could, but the top wouldn't be as successful without the bottom. So they're never gonna fix it. If the right people had not spoken to my life, I would be a statistic. It's just the truth. That's why I say teachers, educators, coaches saved my life. Football changed my life. Too many people, especially in this generation, they chase their dream selfishly. They don't chase it for a reason, for a person, or for a why. My why was my mother, my grandma. So my dream chasing, it wasn't for me. I, my dream, I had a shallow dream. My dream was to own a Mercedes Benz and wear polo shirts. My ultimate dream was to get my mother and grandma, but don't let them die in the, in the projects. Don't let them die living in the government self down housing. And I did that. So what made me different is when I looked at the guys, all I did different was make better choices. I wasn't different. And that's one of the things that young people and people today, even my age, still seem to take for granted. Good choices. Good choices just don't happen. They're not just a part of your conscious mind. You have to act on them. You know, oh, I'm going to do this. And then you do the opposite. You're not acting. You're just saying something. Did I make all the right choices? No. There's been stumbles and falls, but out of my 49 years of living, how bad do I want to breathe, you know, and all that stuff that these guys say, I don't have to say that. I lived it for real. I've been a part of it. You know, there's over 8.4 billion people in the world. There's only 1,600 NFL players a year. That's like, it's, it's not a mistake when you make it in athletics. It's not a mistake. It's only so many billionaires in the world. It's not a mistake when you become a billionaire. Steve Jobs was not a mistake. He was a gift from God. 
that use his gift. Every one of us have a gift, but most people are afraid to tap into their gift. So they die. The, the graveyard is the richest place with gifts. I don't want to die with none of my gifts. I want to bend and exhausted everything that's inside of me. So the same way I played football, the same way I chased up my dreams, that's the same passion I have for saving young people today in the world, not just in my community anymore. I kept working, I kept pushing, I kept believing in me. You gotta get up and go to work. You have to work through the pain. Don't complain. It ain't gonna do no good anyway. I live a life where we deal with kids that are on the operating table. I got a PhD in saving lives, but I've never went to medical school. It's a different type of doctor. So every day, the kids we work with, they're on the operating table. And if we don't breathe life into them, they're gonna die right in front of us. No, just work. You just work and everything will work out. If you work it, it works. How do you take a gift that God gave you and abuse it? See, this is what people don't realize, especially in the athletic world. You have a short window of lifetime to be an athlete. You got your whole life to be a professor. You got your whole life to go to school. You have a short time to be an athlete. So I didn't want nobody to take that away from me. It is not the time to give up. You just have to work every day. If you don't see it, it's hard to believe. These kids are dead mentally, visually, and if they don't see it, they can't grasp it. You know, you give somebody hope, and man, you give them a chance in life. See, they know Corey, Coach Fuller, the foot, the NFL player. They don't know the core Fuller that was without a daddy. They don't know the core Fuller that lost his only sibling. They don't know the core Fuller that been on food stamps and welfare. My mama working two or three jobs to try to feed us. They didn't know that core Fuller until I showed them. In due time, if you work hard enough, and if you just work, it'll all work. I tell people all the time, I never say it's easy. No. This is the thing, people see the glory, they don't know the story. The average human being is not finna go through all that. They're not finna come up against all that and be successful. They're gonna quit. They're not gonna finish the race. The race don't go to the fast nor the swiftest. It goes to the one who endures the most. Because enduring makes you strong. When you go through things, you have to learn how to endure and fight through pain. But when you come out on the other side of it, it's gonna be your reward. I've never seen this storm without a rainbow. You've never went outside and been through a major storm and didn't see a rainbow. It's the same way in life. The storms of life are gonna weigh you down, they're gonna come, and they're gonna go. Like every storm runs out of rain, and then the rainbow is gonna come. But are you gonna push through the storm long enough to get to that part of the rainbow, that part of gold on the other side of that rainbow? And the average person, they can't even get started when the storm comes because they're feeling sorry for themselves. And the only thing that takes our darkness is light, but people are afraid to run to the light. It shouldn't be this hard, but we continue to make it hard because we don't believe. We won't commit. But when you commit to it, it's too hard to give up. Too hard to turn back. You just have to work. Uh, people Every won't day. commit to what they believe in. They won't commit to what God has put inside of them. Some of you are not hearing me and you're not understanding so me. So you got to give birth to it. You got to give life to it. You got to speak and you got to breathe into it. But people won't commit. You understand me? Yes, sir. This why I learned how to play football now. You're not comfortable until you be uncomfortable. A lot of people are comfortable and never been uncomfortable. You don't really know you're comfortable until you've been uncomfortable. Too many people are comfortable, and then when they get uncomfortable, they commit suicide. In the midst of storms, there's always peace. 
So I used to always train my body and my mind in the midst of peace, be at war. So when the war started, I'd be at peace. I've been through so much that certain situations can't rattle me. You know, the only thing I haven't been through is I haven't died. And that's the real reality, especially when you still have young kids and you've been the, you over half of your life already. So that's the only battle I've not faced. Like one of my kids, my first son, I didn't find out till he was five biologically, he's not my son. And I still raised him till he was 18. Like, it, these, not, these are just not tests. These are not just trials. These are life-shaking moments that I had in college that will stop the average wrong person. I was still a young boy trying to become into a man because I'm supposed to be a statistic. I'm not supposed to be this winning coach. I'm not supposed to be the guy saving the kid's lives. In life, you're going to get knocked down. In football, you're going to get knocked down. If you get into a fight with the wrong person, they hit you, they can knock you out. Football, you're going to get knocked out. You're going to get beat. You're going to get ran over. And in life, sometimes, you're going to get beat. You're going to get ran over. So football and life is direct correlation to each other where they play hand-to-hand in, -hand in situations that are going to arise in your life. So my lessons that I learned in football, that I take into my life, never give up, never surrender, never retreat. When I'm dead, that's when my game is over. I'm going to beat this game of life. So if you're not willing to die every day, there's no reason you even try to chase that. If you ain't going to sacrifice, you ain't going to have that. You got to die every day. You got to be selfless to be successful. I need you to understand, if you work it, it works. That's why I'm always saying just work. It is not the time to give up. You don't understand that your name, your money, your status don't get you to be a professional athlete. It's called work. Focus on the task at hand. Some of you are not hearing me and you're not understanding me. And when you get to the top, you know what's hard? Stand there. Are you willing to pay the price if you wanted a 53? Every year, when your family vacationing, you have to be self-driven to be motivated. I can give you all the speeches I want, but if you're not self-driven, that speech is only going to be temporary. But how much motivation do you have in yourself when it's dark, when nobody's watching, the coach is not yelling, the fans are not screaming? Motivation determines the destination. How far and how long you motivated to get to your destination. Some of you are sitting there right now. You have this big vision of being the next Deion Sanders, being the next Jerry Rice, the next Randy Moss, the next, next Joe Montana, the next Tom Brady. But are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to work? Non-stop. See, what y'all don't see is the days when we're alone working and we see ourselves running out of those tunnels. But you must run on the practice field. You must go to the weight room and you must go to the classroom. A lot of you young guys, you want all the glitz and glamour of the game, but are you willing to go through the pain that most of you never see? Because on Sunday, it's a rehearsal of what we've been doing Monday to Saturday. On Saturday, it's Monday to Friday. In high school, it's Monday to Thursday. But the cold days and the hot summer days, are you willing to really pay that price to try to be one of the 1,600 of the world in the NFL? Really? You think that when you see the businesses, the big houses, guys walk around with money on social media, it's a price been paid. It didn't just happen. This is the one arena that most of you are trying to come in. You don't understand that your name, your money, your status don't get you to be a professional athlete. It's called work. You just have to work every day. And when you get to the top, you know what's hard? Stand there. Are you willing to pay the price to be one of the 53 every year? When your family 
vacationing, things are pulling at you, wife, kids, what are you willing to do? Because there's a price to be paid for this victory. Go get your victory. Just work. All the work, all the weightlifting, all the running has came down to 48 minutes. Listen to me, sons. I love you. Do you love yourself and each other enough to lay it on the line? Because the price has been paid for this moment. And that's what you do when you work. I need you to understand that every day you come up on this hill, it's real. It don't get no real in this moment in your life. Some lives gonna change tonight. Somebody gonna get that offer that they've been wanting. You have paid the price and your time is now. You know, when I was a kid playing the game of football, I used to look at my situation and I always thought, how did we get here? Why are we living in the projects? Why are things always so negative towards young black males, young black boys trying to just dream about a better life? What I always did, I took my situation and I made it my motivation. I took my downs and made it become my ups. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna sit here in your everyday life and play a self-party, self-pity party with yourself? How hard are you willing to work to get yourself out of the situation? Most of you don't understand when you see somebody that have been going through it, they have been going through it alone. Taking everything you have sacrificed, everything you've been through, every dream you thought you had about your business, about your career, just go work. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nobody tell you it's not possible. You're looking at a man that comes from that. Took everything that was a negative and turned into a positive and used it to my favor. Because all I did, I just worked. I worked. And I worked. And I continue to work. And if you get that type of attitude, that type of mindset, all you're going to have is a bunch of dreams and a bunch of broken parts. But you're afraid to just work. That 21 years. 21 years I stayed in these crunches. This is why I learned how to play football on that. Y'all keep walking around like y'all got something. I come from nothing. I keep getting y'all my soul every day. Cause y'all won't listen to me. Nobody gonna give us nothing. We gotta take what we want. You wanna go to college? You wanna get out of this situation? Work hard. That's why we came through here. My whole, my, my, my master bedroom, bigger than this whole house. I come from nothing. I don't want to hear no more complaining. I'm none of y'all. All we gonna do is work. Do y'all understand me? Yes, sir. Get on the bus.